On this week's episode of Fishing 411 TV, Mark and Jake Romanak head east to the New York waters of Lake Erie. Summertime is prime time for targeting walleye on Lake Erie's eastern basin. And no presentation catches more of these popular fish than trolling with spinner rigs. Mark and Jake use lead core line and Yakima hammer time spinners en route to boating quick limits of impressive walleye. <laughs> Now that is a nice fish. The fish are big and the action is fast on this week's Lake Erie open water trolling adventure. bumpy on the pond today I guess that's a good thing you know the interesting thing for me for the eastern basin here where we're at today is that the winds that we like to fish back home on the western basin are completely different than the winds you'll fish here completely different believe it or not a good wind here is a lot of times a north wind because it's fairly protected here out of Buffalo with a north wind When the wind blows out of the south or the west is when you get the bumpy water. And the cool thing about that is that where we're sitting right now, we're just a few miles away from Lake Ontario. So what happens is uh, when the wind blows north, guys come over here and they fish Lake Erie. And when the wind blows south, they go up to Lake Ontario and they fish Lake Ontario. <laughs> so they got the best of both worlds here, right close at hand. What do we have on here? We got some life on here, Jake. I got one on my three color out there too. Double header going here. He's right here, Jakers. This looks like an eating class fish. Coming. Nice fish, Dad. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good way to that's start. That's a good start. <laughs> like I said, a good place to start. An eating class fish. I don't know if we want to keep any today or if we're just going to let our fish go. You want to just let our fish go today? Yeah, we'll just let him go today, yeah. Yeah, we're just going to let that guy go. He's a lucky, lucky walleye. We'll see you next year. So you know we're fishing night crawlers today, and, and uh, normally when you fish light bait, you wouldn't think you'd have to add scent to it. Um, but the reason why we're adding pro here here is actually a good reason. Night crawlers, of course, have a strong odor, but we pack, we take them out of the packing, the dirt, and we wash them and then put them in a cooler with ice water. And the reason we do that is it keeps the boat nice and clean. Um, but it also has the effect when those crawlers are sitting in the water for a long time, they don't have much odor anymore. So taking some Nightcrawler Procure scent and juicing that up a little bit brings back that scent, of course, and puts that scent stream in the water. It works beautifully. And uh, Procure makes a, a wide variety of different scent products. Um, but here when you're fishing Nightcrawlers, obviously you want to use Nightcrawler scent. I had to tease that one in the biting, Dad. 
<laughs> that, that's a good thing. <laughs> this is on that bottom bouncer rod. I'll tell you one thing. Normally when I fish a bottom bouncer, you know, a number two, a three, a four ounce bottom bouncer is a big bottom bouncer. But we've actually been trolling a lot faster than what I would normally troll a Colorado blade. And it's working really well, these fish are biting it. But to keep that 45 degree angle that I like to keep with a bottom bouncer, I went up to an eight ounce bottom bouncer. Kind of like fishing a downrigger ball down there for walleyes, but it's keeping that right angle, it's working good. Welcome to the Eastern Basin Bottom bouncer fishing Eastern Basin style. Nice walleye too, Dad. Screw up. There you go. He's a good one. <laughs> good job, Jake. Well, that's not a bad fish right there, Dad. I'll take those cookie cutter size walleyes any day of the week. But what caught that fish was a bottom bouncer. And I think a bottom bouncer is one of the most popular things to ever catch a walleye. No matter where you take it, bottom bouncers work. But this is a little bit different. I'm going to put him back in the net. And I'm going to pull this bottom bouncer up here. This is an eight ounce bottom bouncer. Definitely not the Norman walleye fishing, but you know, we're fishing that 45 to 50 foot of water and we're pulling these Colorado blades at two miles an hour, which is really right at the max you can really pull a Colorado style harness. Uh, but that two mile an hour speed with the bouncer, you really want to keep that 45 degree angle. One of the mistakes I see with bottom bouncers is I think guys take it as a finesse program and it really isn't. It's what you want is you want that bottom bouncer at a 45 degree angle and you want that bouncer actually just ticking the bottom and keeping that harness in close proximity to the bottom. If this bouncer is dragging and you use too light of a weight, well, you'll get zebra mussels and then you won't catch anything. So don't worry about weight. Go as heavy as you gotta go to keep the presentation working right. And here today, it's this big heavy eight ounce bouncer that's getting it done. Special considerations provided by Eagle Claw, the only fish hooks made in America. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Got one going on this middle board, Dad. I don't know if watching offshore boards go back will ever get old. Man, this is a lot of fun. When it comes to fishing crawler harnesses, speed is really important. And the reason why speed's important is because it's really, you know, determines the whole presentation. If you go too slow, you won't get any rotation on your blades. So a lot of times, you know, you hear guys going, you know, super slow, below one mile an hour. And personally, I don't really like fishing a crawler harness at that speed because your blade is not rotating at that speed. Um, but if you want to go in that range of what's normal for, for pulling, especially Colorado blades, like 1.3 to 1.5 miles an hour is pretty normal. What I try to do is I try to go as fast as I can go and still get bit. Well then that, even that hits a point of where you can only go so fast when you're pulling a crawler harness. Right now we're going you know, 1.8 to 2.0 miles an hour. And in the world of harness fishing, that's fast, especially when you're talking with Colorado blades. I really wouldn't want to go much faster than that, but the reason I can get away with that today is I'm pulling number four Hildebrandt blades. If I went to a bigger blade, I'd have to worry about a lot of twist in the line. So all of these factors are in account when it comes to trying to catch walleyes with harnesses, but the one key is, is if you can go fast, go as fast as you can get away with, because you're just gonna cover more water. The more water you cover, the more walleyes you get to be in front of. Speaking of being in front of walleyes, we're in front of a bunch of them today. <laughs> this is almost non-stop right now. Almost non-stop. Nice Not a bad fish. fish. There we go, in the scoop. Nicely done, Jake. Lively little bugger. Look how thick this fish is. I mean, this is what, like an 18-inch walleye? Not a big one. <laughs> I think but, he's uh, ate a few alewives in his life. <laughs> plenty of food, no, no doubt about that. We're gonna get him back. All right, right here is the blade that we just caught that walleye on. And this is a Hildebrandt blade from Yakima Bait Company. And it's a number four. And really your sizes that you're looking at as a walleye fisherman is either a number four, a number five, or a number six. And the five and sixes are used a lot more on the big waters like Lake Erie or Saginaw Bay, some of your Great Lakes. Your inland lakes, you might want to go down to even a smaller blade. Um, but my go-to blade size seems to be that number four because it's a lot easier to fish. And what I mean by that is speed. I can fish this blade slow and I can fish this blade fast. And because of that, I can really change my speed throughout the day and not have to worry about it. And so this number four Hildebrandt's what's getting it done today. Today we've been spending our time fishing Colorado blades, very much like the hammer time spinner that I have right in front of me here on my finger. But there is another option. If you decide you want to go a little faster out here, a lot of Eastern Basin guys like willow leaf blades. 
And willow leaf blades come by their name naturally. Obviously, that blade is long and slender like a willow leaf. The beauty of a willow leaf blade is it spins closer to the shaft. And why is that important? It's important because it allows you to troll a little bit faster without getting line choice in your leader. So if you're looking to go faster than two miles an hour in troll spinners, Willow leaf blades are a good option. If you're going to troll two miles an hour or slower, I think Colorado's are probably going to catch you the most fish. I looked up again, it has just been stellar this morning. If you're going to get into this lead core thing, one of the things you're going to understand is how to set it up. And I'll explain how our, our lead cores are set up. First thing we do is we put 200 yards of monofilament backing on the reel. And in this case, we're using 20 pound mono because we use these exact same setups for trout, salmon, steelhead, and of course, and walleye. So if you were just going to use this for walleye, you could get by with a 12 to a 15 pound backer, no problem. But we use just one lead core set up for everything. Then we spool on our lead core. And in this case, we're using 27 pound test lead core. And again, if you're just a walleye guy, you could get by with 18, but 27 is what you want here for if you want the multi-purpose lead core. And then at the terminal end, we use a fluorocarbon leader. And I like about a 30 foot leader. And in this case, again, 20 pound test is going to be an ideal combination there. So that's the basic setup. You just have to have a reel big enough to handle all that. And uh, so we're using 27s, um, 47s, and, uh, and 57 or 55 class reels in order to handle all that lead core. And uh, well, this is a nice fish. This fish is thumping. This okay. fish is just absolutely thumping. Man, does that feel good in the morning like today. We are at the leader, Jake, so we got about uh, 30 feet to this fish, I think. Well, I would go get the net, but it's still on the floor from the last one, so. <laughs> I can say no. it hasn't gone very far is what you're saying. Oh, it's a horse. That's a toad. It's a Absolute toad. Absolute horse. It's a toad. Let's get this girl in the boat here. This is the reason people come to the Eastern Basin is for a shot at a fish like this. A little bit closer. Got him in the scoop. Woo! He has a lot in the scoop. Whoa, Whoa. is that a stud? Baby! Oh my goodness. That's why you come to the Eastern Basin. Not to catch them eaters, but to catch these studs. Woo, baby! <laughs> now that is a nice fish, and we owe it to lead core and hammer time spinners. <laughs> Man, what a beautiful fish. Special considerations provided by Daiwa Corporation and Motor Guide. Bite fish, not your trolling motor. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's elite sport shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. You know, I often get asked why I have so much sonar, or so much screen on my dash when I'm fishing, and it really comes down to just ease of use. Now, I spend a lot of time in the boat, and especially when you're structure fishing, it becomes a spot on a spot. And so being able to find those little tiny spots, having a big graph is important. And what I mean by that is basically I have, you know, my normal sonar, just I have a medium chirp sonar on one side of the screen on this 12 inch Lawrence unit here. And that's gonna show me fish that are up off bottom. It's gonna show me when, when the bottom comes up and I can find that structure with that part of it. But another part of it that's super important is I wanna have structure scan because structure scan is gonna show me those rocks. It's gonna show me those trans transition edges, and it's even going to show me those fish that are inside of the rocks. And so there's two different styles of structure scan that I have. I have a side scan that's shooting out sonar to either side of the boat, so I can see if I have rocks on this side, or if I have rocks on this side, or maybe both. And then I also have a down scan, which is directly below that. And what that's going to show me is if I go over some boulders, I might be able to see those rocks and then see the fish that are down inside those rocks. So between these three panels that I have on my 12 inch unit here, I can really see what I need to see down there and figure out where I got to position the boat. And to position the boat, I'm using my XI-5 motor guide electric motor and we're anchoring over top of these spots. But all of this technology is teamed together. So I have one graph here that's got all my sonar. I have another graph here that's got my GPS so I can find those plot trails, find those waypoints, and sit right on the perfect spot. And then I have it all networked together so when I want to anchor, I can either do two things. I can use my key fob, and I can use this little anchor mode on my key fob, or right on my graph, I can anchor right on my graph. So I'm using all of this electronics to really get me in that pinpoint spot to make sure I'm sitting right where I need to sit to catch the walleyes. 
Of course, anytime we're fishing in lead core, we're probably going to be fishing in line planer boards like the offshore board I have in my hand here. And the beauty of it is it allows us to stack our lines out to the side and cover more water. But the problem with walleyes is that they're light biters and it's real easy to drag a fish on a planer board and not know that you have it hooked up. And that's why we have our boards equipped with what's called a tattle flag. When I spin this around, you can see that that articulating flag system is just a spring and a linkage arm that allows this flag to go down when a fish bites. Now that's an important thing. The other important thing is that it's very adjustable. There's a lot of different settings here because the spring tension that works with a three color doesn't work with a seven color. And so we adjust the spring tension so they're appropriate for whatever amount of lead core we're using, whether it be three or five or like seven colors what we're using today. So the adjustability of the tattle flag allows us to determine exactly every bite that we get. We never miss a fish. Now that's what you like to see. That board went buried and stayed buried. <laughs> you got one on too? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be that kind of day here on the eastern basin out of Buffalo. <laughs> well, I tell you what, since this is like for I'm going to go ahead and set this one here and let him hang. <laughs> and yours is on a bouncer, so he should be there quick. Yeah, you'll be here pretty quick. And uh, another decent fish here. I don't think this is any monster, Jake. I'm not sure how, how big yours was, but uh, um, man, they're fun on, on a bottom bouncer rods, light rods like this. Oh, it's a nice fish, Dad. Let's see if I can get him up. There we go. There you go. Not a bad fish. A little better grade. All right, I'll take care of him if you want to go grab your fish. Chinese fire drill around here. Gotta love it. Woo! What a beautiful fish. Most people keep him, but we're gonna let him go. <clears throat> I'm just in time to get my board, Dad. It's a beautiful thing here this morning. Oh, no! Oh, now you got another board pounding. Man, oh man. Got him dialed in this morning, Jacob. There you go, son. You know, you'll probably hear me say this a lot in this episode, but I absolutely love lead core. And I can't stress enough, so often I hear guys saying they're afraid to fish it because you got to put so much line out. There's a lot of applications you really don't have to put a lot of line out. The longest lead that we have today is a seven color, which is 70 yards of line, um, which might seem like a lot of line, but that's our deepest line. And if you learn how to fish lead core, you can take it basically anywhere in the Great Lakes and be successful. You just change your lengths. You know, if I'm fishing Lake Superior, I'm probably gonna be fishing something like a two or a three or a four color of lead core, real high up in the water count. If I'm fishing Lake Michigan for salmon, you know, I might fish those five, sevens, and 10 colors of lead core. The length of the lead core is just determined, the more lead that's in the water, the deeper it's gonna be. And so you change that up, and, uh, and you can catch fish no matter where you're at in the Great Lakes. Oh, nicer quality fish, Jake. Nicer quality of fish. A little closer. Got him. Nice fish. Got him. Now that's a beautiful walleye. He's going to give us a beautiful fin right there at that morning sun. Absolutely gorgeous. Another leg core walleye bites the dust. This one's not biting the dust, though. He's going back. And, uh, and you can come to Buffalo and catch him yourself. Special considerations provided by Trailmaster Boat Trailers and Lakeside Motorsports. Special considerations provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait suns. You know, electronics have really come a long ways, and there's some technology that's out that's very new to the market that's really helped me this year catch more fish just because it gives me a lot more detail. And what that is, is the new fish reveal with Lowrance. You take your HD units and you do the update and you get that fish reveal. Now, what is that? Basically what fish reveal is, is it's down scan imaging that's overlaid to chirp sonar. Now here's the benefit of that. Chirp sonar is something that's, again, relatively new, but I've been using it here the last three or four years. And it has better target separation. Target separation is a huge thing when you're walleye fishing, because if you're looking at fish at bottom, you know, if you only have one sonar signal going down and you don't have very good target separation, what happens is the walleye become the bottom and you really can't separate the difference between fish and bottom. So that target separation will separate the fish up off bottom and it makes it easier for you to see that fish. Downscan imaging has exactly the same characteristics, but for a long time it really didn't mark suspended fish very well. And by taking the new fish reveal and combining the downscan imaging with the chirp sonar, you kind of get the best of both worlds. 
by marking a ball of bait that would just show up on the chirp sonar. On the down scan imaging, you can actually mark the individual bait and then see the fish inside of that bait. So just the more details helps you put together that pattern throughout any given day. That is a stud. This is a good fish, Dad. Yep. This is a just real good fish. Just keep him coming. That's the way he's got. You got about five more feet to the, to the leader. Throw him left if you can, right. son. A little more. I can't get him. A little more left. That was a pretty weird deal. He got up underneath the, uh, the kicker, up underneath the V6, and I couldn't get on him. That's all right. You still got him here. All right. Throw him left, and we'll see if we can't make this happen a little better. Get him the scoop That's that where time. we got him. Nice fish. We got him that time. Look at that fish, Dad. These are absolutely gorgeous. You know, we talked about the kind of the migration of walleyes uh, in Lake Erie and how it works, but basically these fish spawn in the western basin of Lake Erie around the islands of Port Clinton area, and then they start working their way east, and all summer long they love this deep, cool water that, you know, the eastern basin allows, but then also the forage of alewives, and there's a lot of good forage out here in this deep water that these like big, healthy fish like to feed on. And so if you're looking to catch big walleyes in Lake Erie, you're gonna wanna go east and look towards buffalo. What a great fish. Nice fish. Look closer, got him in the scoop. Nice fish. Reel all the way to the swivel if you can. Keep him coming, a little bit more. Lift. Oh, 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 oh. he did not like that. There we he go, did I think we got like him on that. this round, Dad. You ready? Yep. Put him in the scoop. Yes. Nice fish. Beautiful fish. And Jake. off in the basket, too. What a giant fish, man. That is so awesome. This is the reason you come to the eastern basin of Lake Erie. These walleyes live here all summer long. You know, there's a lot of places you can catch big walleyes on Lake Erie, but if you want to come in the summertime and you want to catch big walleyes, this is the place to be. Hey, my name is Jake Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 411 TV. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. Closed captioning provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports dealer. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle Company, Evan Rood Outboards, Starcraft Marine, Cisco Fishing Systems, Yakima Bait, Jay's Sporting Goods, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Move Seats, Lawrence Electronics, and by Precision Trolling Data. Sweet Lake Erie Walleye. Back he goes with Dutch Miller Day. Woohoo! <laughs>